You're listening to the Patient Experience Blueprint with Intibio. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Patient Experience Blueprint. I have a consultant, Sarah Van Krusen, joining us today. And today we'll be talking about strategies for meaning, meaningful communication with new dental patients. So Sarah, if you could introduce yourself, that would be great. Hi, I'm Sarah Van Krusen. I've been in dentistry for almost 17 years. I've held a variety of roles starting from dental assistant, clinical coordinator, clinical manager, and then just out of a need of people that I knew, I became a consultant of dentists that I previously worked with. They reached out to me and asked me if I could help them. And then from there, it just kind of became dynamically people asking if I can help them out. And it's been a really unique journey. Obviously, most of my strengths, because I do come from an RDA background, lie in the clinical aspect of the practices. Okay, great. And Sarah and I actually met at PDC 2024 this year. Sarah came by the booth um, and this is her first time on our podcast. So for my first question, uh, I'd love to know how can practitioners establish trust with new dental patients during the initial encounter? So typically it starts before the patient even shows up into the practices. So making sure that we have a cohesive team that aligns with patient care and the patient perspective is really important. So when the patient reaches out to the practices, making sure that we're picking up the phones, answering the phone calls, if they're leaving messages that we're prompt and getting back to them, that shows them that we value their, their time and we value them as a patient right from the beginning. So by doing that, we cohesively bring it back into the patient and we build that value with them. And then we work with the patient to make sure that we understand their needs and then we educate them throughout the process and what to expect and keep them informed. Wonderful. I love, um, it personally, when my dentist is educating me throughout the process, can you go into that just a little bit more on like what that could look like for a new patient? So making sure that the patient understands kind of what to expect when they walk through the front door and getting them settled through and what to expect in their first visit. So whether that be um, their new patient exam, their hygiene, kind of what to expect when they end up also into that dental chair perspective and that they're prepared for kind of what that looks like. So giving them the knowledge that they'll spend half an hour to an hour with the dentist to start with, and then you'll transition to our hygiene team and they'll do your, your cleaning that day. And then we'll make a treatment plan from there and build on from that. Great. And I guess that would kind of go into my next question is, um, a addressing common concerns that the patient would have. Um, Do you have any effective strategies that practices could use? So effective strategies would be understanding their oral health care needs and their statuses. So making sure that when a patient is in our practice, that we are educating them on exactly what we're seeing. We're showing them not only like if they have decay or the treatment that they, they need, but celebrating also the successes that they're having as well. Like, you know, in this area here, you've had a crown, you've done a really good job of keeping the tissue around that crown really healthy. You know, we're going to continue to work with that and build upon that. And then also celebrating things as they progress through our practice. Also, another thing that we also need to remember is we need to be empathetic when a patient shows up Mm -hmm. and they're nervous because they could be apprehensive. They could be fearful. We don't know what their past experiences are. So strategies are to be present when they're in your chair with you. We don't want a hundred distractions to pull us away. We want to give them our undivided attention to understand exactly what they've faced in the past and kind of their feelings going into this next phase of their oral health care journey. And we can also build upon that by giving them the tools to be successful and, you know, tell them that we're going to be a partner in their healthcare journey so that they feel like they're part of it too. And that we're there to help them. Absolutely. I think active listening really plays a huge role in that as well. And knowing that from patient side, knowing that like my, uh, dentist or hygienist is really listening to what I have to say and really listening to my concerns. So I think that is a great way to go about that. Um, 
And then turning into the technology side of things, how do you think that we could uh, it could be utilized to enhance communication and patient engagement in dental practices? So I know we use our tech, our software at Intibio to communicate with patients, but have you worked with any practices that have used uh, something similar? Yeah, so using technology to be able to connect with patients on their schedule is really great so that they can reach out to us. I'm a mom. I have two kids. They're really busy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just don't have time to sit down and be able to answer anyone back until later. So knowing that there is an option for me to be able to reach out to a dental practice and send a message and that they'll get back to me is really great that it's kind of on my timeline. And I don't feel pressured to make sure that I pick up that phone call or that I'm calling them during business hours. So having text communication is a really great option, email option so that patients can reach out to us. It just gives them the option to when they're feeling brave in the moment or they have a minute that they can reach out to us and connect with us. And then other strategies too is building a education system for your patients and using TVs, using everything like the monitors and the AI software that's kind of come out to kind of pull up the information. And the more educated our patients are, the better understanding they have of their best route for them to meet their optimal health care. Great. I'd say that, yeah, we could utilize technology to kind of go into what we were chatting about earlier of actively listening and informing the patient and just addressing all of their concerns. So that's good to know. Uh, I'll pass that along to the engineering team over here as well. Um, next up, I want to know, um, do you have any effective ways to follow up with new dental patients after their initial visit uh, just to maintain communication or build long-term relationships? Is there any one right way to go about that? I don't think that there's one right way. There's a multitude of ways that we can do it. But I always refer to this component of it as providing care beyond the chair. So they're not physically in our office. However, a patient is still our patient. And we want to make sure that we're reaching out to them and seeing how they did after their first visit. You can kind of tell when a patient's had a difficult appointment or not even that, that they're nervous. Mm -hmm. So reaching out to them, doing care calls on a regular basis, it doesn't have to be a big procedure, but even hygienists reaching out to a patient and saying, hey, how are you feeling after that cleaning? I know that it was a really difficult one. I wanted to see kind of where you are. Are you sore? Anything like that. Um, even if a administrator, if they had to review a treatment plan with a patient and figure out financing. Sometimes you got to give people some time to think about it and come up with their questions and then reaching back out to them just keeps us on point and on tap so that they can ask those questions as well and that they don't feel lost in the mix of everything. And then I've also been in practices too, where sometimes you write a thank you card to the patient. Like, thank you for choosing us. Thank you for coming in. You know, it was really great to meet you. And it's personalized by a clinical team member or an administrator. I think too, I spoke with someone once and they said that they, it wasn't an initial visit, but they had done, had a procedure done. And once they were finished with it, their dental office sent them flowers to like get well soon flowers. And I think that just something really small that says, hey, we're still thinking about you goes a really long way in. And I'm just thinking about like in my personal life, things like I've, for places I've gone or um, procedures I've had done and they just do a quick follow up. It's like, OK, they know who I am. They remember me. They're checking in, which it does go a long way from nothing. When we talk about tailoring our communication styles, if practitioners want to tailor it to accommodate patients with different personalities or communication preferences, do you know how they could? There's, yes, I've actually taken a course in this and a practice that I used to work at. So we did um, a course where we learned about communication styles. So there's lots of times where you can actually pick up in, innuendos from the patient by like what they're wearing, how they, they speak to you. So typically patients are auditory, they are visual or kinesthetic. So when they're speaking to you, just pick up on kind of what they're saying to you. 
patients that say like, I hear what you're saying, or I hear it this way. Patients that say, I saw this, I see this this way, or patients that say, I feel are patients that you're, you can kind of gear them into kind of where they fall into. And then that also helps us gear kind of our delivery to them. So patients that need to feel things, you might need to physically bring out a model and let them play with it and see it so that they can kind of understand better because they get to use their hands. They feel their way through things. Patients that are visual, those are the ones that we use all the posters for. We kind of show them exactly what they're seeing and walk them through so that they can see it, but also use cue words that play into it for them. Like, do you see how this looks? And it draws their attention for those visual people. And then your auditory people, they're the people that need all the information. So you need to give them a lot of the whys, give them the opportunity to talk about it and talk them through stuff so that they understand it and they grasp it better. So those are kind of the things that I've learned along the way. And just be patient with people. Everyone are, is different. We're not the same. One patient to the next is always going to be different. That is really interesting. What was the second one you talked about where they're visual learners? So visual people, they need to see okay. what something looks like. So like I said, using a poster that has like, if you're explaining a root canal, for example, bringing up a poster that shows exactly how a root canal is performed so that they can see the different steps is really beneficial for them. It kind of reassures them and it gives them the information that they need on the perspective that they need. And then take their imaging of their x-ray of their tooth and tell them exactly how you're going to do it so that they can see those steps. And that's their preparedness level as well. Yeah. I feel very validated because every time I go to the dentist, I am always curious to see what my x-rays look like. And I ask the doc, the dentist to explain it all to me. So this, I just learned what type of patient I am. <laughs> yes. Perfect. So, um, when we want to have a, a difficult conversation with, uh, patients, what strategies do you think practitioners could use then? So we're always going to have those patients that come in. We work in a high stress environment, even though we may not convey it that way for patients, it's quite stressful. And then we're also running on a schedule. So that can create stress too. So always remembering that, Every appointment is different. You need to leave one appointment and go to another one is a really good strategy, but hearing out the patient. So I was once told, and there's a lot of truth to this, that we always talk about how the customer is right. However, the customer may not always be a hundred percent right, but their concerns are valid. So yes. by hearing out what they have to say, their concerns are valid and we need to look at what those concerns are and build off of that. So being patient and answering those questions and just answer them to the best of your ability. And if you don't have the answer, be okay with saying, you know what, I'm going to look into this a little bit further and I'm going to get back to you on this and hold true to that of the timeline that you set for yourself, because then that builds the value that you understand what their concerns are and that you're willing to still have those conversations with them, but you need to make sure that you're giving them the correct information. And I think when you, again, show someone that you're actively listening, you're hearing their concerns, you're looking into what they're concerned about, that is going to calm anxiety by 50%. I just about two minutes ago said, oh my gosh, I feel so validated by this learning style. Um, so I think, yeah, just validating their concerns, what they're having to say, their questions goes a really long way for the patient. And do you have any examples for me of successful patient communication initiatives or programs that might've helped patients, uh, improve patient engagement improve? Yeah. So I've worked with pediatric dentists in the past in a large practice that I was in. So engagement with a community, like a younger community, yes, patients can always go to a pediatric dentist. However, building those relationships from the beginning. So I've actually seen pediatric dentists, they go to mom and talk groups. Okay. They do speaking there. Also, if dental hygienists or dentists want to go into like a senior facility and give knowledge to the caregivers of those people or um, the seniors, 
because they may not have the ability to get out of that environment um, on a regular basis as they should. That is great to know. I love the idea of uh, pediatric dentists going and chatting with moms, I or with parents. I imagine that being a parent is high stress all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then when it comes to the dentist, it's a little bit worse. How do you think practitioners can proactively address potential communication barriers, such as maybe language barriers with new dental patients? Uh, language barriers is always a factor. We always encounter that along the way. So if you have team members on your team that potentially speak a different language, a great way to facilitate bringing those patients in so that they can find a good fit is putting their information on the website, right? Like we have a team member that is able to speak French or they're able to speak um, Filipino, anything like that kind of sets the patient up for success ahead of time when they're searching for a practice. But there's times where a patient will end up in your practice that they don't speak the same language and we don't have anyone to be able to translate for them and they don't bring in a family member. So being patient and sometimes you have to lean back on technology and use Google Translate. Absolutely. And I think to like trying to validate again, their concerns and their questions as much as you can. Um, but yeah, Google Translate is a godsend. And then this one I find, so I work in our marketing team here and I track a lot of metrics and it's really easy for me because I have things like Google analytics. I'm using my own tracking, um, yeah. but tracking, uh, an effective communication style could be a little bit harder. Do you know any key indicators or metrics that, uh, dental practices could use to assess the effectiveness of their communication? Um, off the top of my head, no, but obviously your patient engagement of your return rate of your patient, your communication of your team of your book back rates is really a key indicator as well, because that shows our ability to communicate with our patients, their importance, the priorities and everything. And those are easy enough metrics to pull up in your software systems and that they're coming back to ask questions to is another metric off the top of my head. Okay, great. Um, so that brings us to the uh, end of my questions. Um, I would love for you to uh, just tell us where everyone else can find you um, and where they can follow along with you. Um, typically, you can find me on LinkedIn. So if you just kind of search my name, it'll bring me up. If anyone has questions, they can always reach out to me. I have a really great network of people that maybe not myself, but if someone's looking for supports in different areas, then I can connect them to someone that would suit them. Great. Okay. Thank you. And then you are in uh, Western-ish Canada, right? Yes. In the Calgary area. Okay. Wonderful. So any uh, dental practices in Calgary, if you are looking for a brilliant dental consultant, you have found one. <laughs> All right, Sarah, thank you so much. It was so great to have you on. Uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Okay. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye.